Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 26 of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels from Sandusky, Ohio, and I'm thrilled that my guests are able to join me this morning. Both of my guests are longtime stand-up comedians who love the game of footy and love to drop things on the floor and have combined their profession and their passion for footy into one of the funniest podcasts I've ever heard. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome Adam Rosenbox and Michael Chamberlain of the Junk Time AFL podcast to the show. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you here this morning. Thanks for How are us. you, Craig? Yeah, pleasure. thanks for having us, man. I'm great. I'm I'm great. I'm I'm thrilled to have you guys on. I I found your podcast kind of organically. I came across it and I thought, okay, this is an interesting title, and started listening. And I've I've listened to probably fifteen or twenty episodes, and, and it's uh, it, it's very funny. And uh, you guys don't. Pull any <laughs> and I think punches. you probably know what you know wiser about the game. Uh, but you do know uh, all the players who have been arrested. Um, yeah, I, well, there's uh, and just had one today who uh, I'm sure Eddie McGuire is really happy about right now uh, mm. <laughs> with uh, Mr. Degoey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys started out. You know, you've been comics for a long time. And when did you know that this is the career path that you wanted to take? In terms of comedy? Yeah, in terms of comedy, yeah. I initially got into it myself because um, I had a few friends who did it. And I think, and I reckon there's a lot of people like this where they kind of go, oh, I could do that. Um, and so I kind of just did it myself. And then, uh, you know, you just do it more and more and more. And then I kind of got a kind of got a TV job for about a year and a half into it. That went for about two, two and a bit years. So kind of by the end of that, I was like, oh, I suppose I'm a comedian now. <laughs> <laughs> and mine terrific. was always like I, I loved watching stand up so I used to go there was a, a pub in Melbourne called the Esplanade Hotel and their comedy was kind of you know legendary and they'd have a Sunday Arvo for newbies and then the Tuesday night was for the um, you know the sort of veterans of the scene and I used to go to that weekly and just I loved comedy growing up and it was always something that other people did that I never thought that I could do and so when I was at uni for a little bit, I started doing like the radio there and then started at a community radio station in Melbourne and just thought, this is so much fun. I just love it, you know, trying to make people laugh for a living and then entered a competition and then sort of told everyone about that so I couldn't back down. And then that's how I started the stand-up career. And um, not long into it, I got a job writing for TV and then Michael and I, I was probably going for about, when did Skid House start, Chamber? Two thousand and. Two, three? Two, I think. Yeah, 2002, I think. Yeah. So Michael and I started working together about 2003 because I didn't do the first season. And then um, we've been pretty much best friends ever since. Wow. That, that, that... And um, i got to say, too, like, you know, uh, to Adam's credit, like, he's over, what, 20 odd years. Like, he's nearly had, like, five good gigs. So I think that's uh, <laughs> full credit to him. Yeah. Hang in, hang in there, buddy. I, I think I think I watched all of those on YouTube this week. <laughs> I definitely filmed them all. <laughs> so, so, so when you when you were uh, when you were growing up and as you were starting out, what what comics influenced you the most? I mean, I always loved Seinfeld. I remember reading Sign Language and just thinking it was hilarious. Chris Rock was always big, and then when I discovered Norm Macdonald, I was like, I fucking love this guy. He was just so wrong and. I love the weekend update on SNL because uh-huh. we never got that in Australia. So you could only kind of ever find it. Uh, there was a website I found where they'd all been um, transcribed. And so I used to read those you know, oh, so, all the time because I just I loved what he did. So you weren't seeing the video. You were just reading the text of it then. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Someone that's, so that's, put it up. It was that's, the weekend update. Okay. That, yeah. And that, and you know, SNL has been going on now since I think 1975. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been incredible, and it's it's such, it's such a weird thing for us. To, like, what time does the show go to air? Eleven o'clock on a Saturday night. Yeah, I think eleven thirty. Yeah, like that to us, there is no t. Like everyone in Australia, your TV is so weird. Like even your Tonight shows to start so late in a, in Australia. Like a prime time TV show is eight thirty, maybe nine thirty. You might get away with, but after that, forget it. You guys have just a really interesting uh, way of you know structuring your TV. Your program. Well, I, maybe maybe we just drink more coffee than you guys do, and uh, we're you know we you yeah. know, get up. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's uh, Norm Macdonald is 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 a great is a you know, very dry 
you know, but it, but he's not afraid to he's not afraid to you know to not pull punches. And, and yeah, that, that's what I really resonated a lot yeah. with me. And I just I just love his style. He just makes me laugh. And how about you, Michael? Who was your biggest influence? That's actually a good question. I suppose over here in Australia, there was a lot of British comedies um, over the journey. Um, so uh, we have a lot, yeah, we'd have a lot of the American sitcoms, but we would get a lot more of the British stuff than you would guys would have right, got on your major right. networks. Um, and I reckon I'm, I'm of age. I'm not sure what it would be for like 15 year olds now. And I'm not saying like he was like, you know, an inspiration or anything, but um, uh, Adam and I definitely are of an age where uh, it seemed to be, there's a period where every 14, 15 year old boy discovers uh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious and Raw. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it turns out, you know, you can probably go to a lot of schoolyards and, you know, they're teenage boys, you know, quoting that at each other because... It seemed like everybody watched that about 150 times. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I was. I, I thought you were going to say Benny Hill for a moment. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't really a thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. I. Ali G was I remember, quite huge. Yeah. Oh, Ali yeah, G. Yeah, Faulty yeah. Towers. Oh, Faulty oh, yeah. Towers is on a million times. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, sort of later after that, was like Alan Partridge in the Office, mm-hmm. like the, the UK Office, and things like that. Right, right. Sort of resonated mm-hmm. very heavily when we were starting to write for TV. I suppose Chamber. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, there there was an Irish comic back when you know because I think I'm a, I'm a little older than you guys, but there was an Irish comic that I remember seeing uh, when I was a kid, and it was usually like on Saturday night. Saturday nights you would have um, Dave Allen. You'd would have they? yeah, Dave Allen exactly. I love yeah. Dave Allen. Um, hmm. Just a very, you know, very, you know, very, very dry sense of humor. Just, you know, yeah. it was just very funny stuff. I mean, that was somebody who I, I really enjoyed listening to. Now, now, who do you think is your the most underrated comic working today? Who's somebody that you think should get more credit than they do? And I, Michael, I know that you're going to say Adam since he's only had five gigs. But. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who who would be your most underrated? Because I'm not going to ask you overrated. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I don't want you. you to burn any bridges. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I, I can't think of anyone like under underrated. That. Um... I'm trying to think of the things I've watched lately. Like. Uh... Oops! I think we just lost Michael. Just lost Michael for a sec. Yeah, he, well, he um, was... yeah. I actually genuinely can't think of anyone underrated. Like when I was kind of coming through, there was a guy called Darren Casey, who was sort of like the comedian's comedian. You know that um, everyone, all the other comics loved him, and he was genuinely funny. But he just kind of never got that. Um, yeah. He never got that break. That, yeah. You know, make someone huge. Okay. Yeah. That's in. That's cool. That's. <laughs> I yeah. tried to take my jumper off and I pushed the wrong button. I must push the button. Sorry. <laughs> Michael's very good technically. You just need you just needed time to think. We know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's got really warm. <laughs> so yeah, it's. Uh, I was saying, Chamber, like for me, it was Darren Casey. You know, just someone who comics loved but never kind of, you know, took off. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I, I really, I, I couldn't really give you an answer. I must say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah I. I remember I had a I remember having discussions with a, a former student of mine on somebody else a comic that he absolutely loved who I just I didn't didn't care for at all with somebody named Dane Cook. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's very. He's very polarizing, isn't he? Yeah. Well, I, I always yeah, every every time I'd watch him, his idea of telling a joke was he would tell a story, then he would yell at the end of it, and that was the punchline. And it was like. I just, I, I, maybe it just wasn't for me. I was, I'm too old, I guess. But uh, well, it could be that thing, you know. You can, you, you, you can age out of, you know. Yeah. Things can be just not your thing. I mean, it was. I've heard an interview with him. It was quite interesting. He kind of talked about how his kind of rise coincided with um, Napster, um, and so all the college kids would, you know, get on Napster and get his stuff. So he said it was like almost like a. Um, you know, right time, right place. It was quite an interesting conversation. Oh, that, that's a great point. I didn't even think about that. that mm. so, yeah, so and I, then the I rising. Like, oh, I was going to say, for, for me, someone maybe like David Cross, who's, you know, a very frantic comic actor, but I reckon as a stand-up, he's not seen, you know, in the upper echelons, like a Chappelle or, um, you know, that kind of ilk. But I, right, he right. really makes me laugh. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, and, uh, you know, of course, he's the only he's the only comic that's ever said that he blew himself. 
I mean, I've watched Arrested uh, Development so many times. It's just so still so funny. That is, yeah, that is just it's it's almost it's almost genius television. The way that that was crafted the first few seasons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it is just it's brilliant. But uh, you know, moving on to you know your your relationship with the game of footy. You know, Michael, you're you're a Hawthorne fan. Um, Adam, yep. you're 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 a Carlton supporter. I'll, uh, I'll put it out there that I I made I made the conscious decision to be a Geelong supporter. So, oh, okay. How'd you come yeah. about that? Well, you'd have to go back and listen to episode one. Uh, okay. <laughs> which, <laughs> I, I, I was telling Adam before you came on, I, I, did a, I, I made spreadsheets and that sort of thing trying to figure out who I wanted to support, and it was, you know, I, I, I'm, a, uh, I'm, not a, uh, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, so Gold Coast was off the board. Uh, I could not, uh, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't be a Gold Coast fan. Uh, because that just was not going to work out because it would have been too much misery there. Um, I narrowed it down actually to three different clubs. I had my, I had Brisbane, who I thought was an up and coming club. I had Geelong, mm-hmm. and I had Collingwood. Collingwood school yeah. colors. Collingwood's colors are the same as the school where I work. And I'd okay. been talking. I'd been talking to people online, and they and they said that you know, that become you know that Collingwood is very much like a like a New England Patriots type team, like a Dallas Cowboys type team that, uh, yeah. that there are lots of people that are supporters of that club. And, you know, and I thought, you know what, I was going to go ahead and decide to support a team that was not necessarily in the big city. So yeah. that was kind of, that was kind of what led me to, to Geelong. So, and actually I had, you know, I had one player that, uh, I hope to get him on the podcast someday and I have a couple feelers out, uh, and he hasn't played since 2018. Uh, <laughs> so, Nakaya Cockatoo, Nakaya Cockatoo's kind of who kind of put me over the hump to want to be a a cat supporter because just you know he was just a he was like a a bull in a china shop kind of thing just the way he yeah. was playing the game when I was watching and and hopefully he's healthy this year but you know you know we shall well, I'm see. Surprised he hasn't done your podcast. He's got lots of time and rehab to. Well, <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it, I I actually have uh, I have been in contact with somebody in one of the Geelong chat rooms on Facebook who. Oh, yeah. Who uh, had for a, you know, a number of years, for like twenty years, they hosted players in their home, and I'm hoping to get she and her husband on the on the podcast because they they both actually they had hosted both uh, Tom Hawkins and Joel Selwood during their first year with the club. Yeah, so sure. I, I yeah, thought, those people are fascinating. I thought they would have some great stories, and she she knows somebody who had hosted Nakaya Cockatoo, and they were supposedly going to reach out, and, and we'll see if it happens. You know, I'm hoping to get him on. I'm you know I. I, yeah, I'm starting to get. You guys are big names, as far as I'm concerned, and getting you know, on on being on here. So I mean, you're you're kind of helping me make my mark, if you will. So I I appreciate We're you legitimizing it. There you go. There you go. Exactly. You know. I've been uh I've been thinking about hosting do. a couple. I've been thinking about hosting a couple of players from Sydney and the Giants. Um, mm, but, but, just by the fact, but not the first year. I, I want to mean kind of like their sixth or seventh year when they're making you know five hundred thousand. <laughs> so they can just look after okay. me for a while. I, I thought I thought you were going to start referencing the AFLW there, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so you know what do you, you know as as footy fans, which you know you ha- you have to be fans to be doing the podcast that you're doing. You you wouldn't be doing it if you if you weren't. What what are some of your earliest memories and some of your 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 greatest memories that you've had as a fan of the game? Uh. How many hours do you God, have? I'll tell you what. Well, it's only nine, <laughs> it's only nine thirty here. <laughs> now, my 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 first game that I can remember, and I've probably been to games before that, but I don't remember them. My first game I remember I was just turned five, and I went to the nineteen eighty two first semi final Hawthorne North, and that was the debut of Dermot Brereton, who kicked five goals, wow. and then he kind of it wasn't like at that moment, but he um. He was then like my childhood idol, you know. Okay. Um, okay. And then probably as I read more about him as an adult, or my adult idol as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah. you know, looking at him, you know, seeing the old footage of him, yeah, I've seen the video of him. It almost looks like he's uh, like he prance. Prance is not the right word, but he looks almost like a professional wrestler in the uh, yeah, in, in the way that he yeah, kind of the, the way he kind of moved around the field. Is that yeah? And the hair got bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. Yeah. I mean, and they. You know they, that had to be a great club with you know both having both he and uh, 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 Dunstall together. I mean that was, you know, because that, that was a that was a couple of goal kicking machines there. 
Yeah, Just so I think in, I think we won. I think we won five flags in nine wow. nine years. Wow. Um, they uh, yeah that that team of the Hawthorne eighties is up there with you know the best one of the best ever. Right, right. And also uh, back then, Craig, because it wasn't a national comp as such, then it was only really Sydney and Brisbane came in, sort of Gold Coast Brisbane came in later. Every like Dermy was even bigger yeah. because it was just Melbourne. Right. So if you right. saw Dermy out, like if he went to the nightclub and rode his motorbike into the the Metro nightclub, like that was fucking huge. You know? Yeah, that's because it was just he was so big in Victoria, wasn't he, Chandler? Yeah, massive, massive. Yeah. Um, he was kind of the playboy, you know, had the Ferrari and the yeah. dated models and all that kind of stuff, and you know, was making big bucks and and. Um, probably one of the probably one of the first footballers of that era to um, kind of do lots of media as well. Okay, that's and and he's still doing it. And I think he does. You know, I think he does a you know, pretty good job on uh, 360 when he's on there. And you know, and I, I hmm. I'm still figuring out who does which broadcaster is which during the games because I, I I don't recognize voices well enough yet to say oh that's who this person yeah. is. Um, I'm working sure, on it. Sure. <laughs> But you know, it's, and Jeremy's uh, really good because sometimes he can uh, he'll talk about himself a little bit. So you know, if you, <laughs> you can pry it out of him. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I worked with Jeremy in radio for a few years, and he's like a super lovely bloke. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I see. I seem to remember him talking about he has some serious back issues still to this day that he that he has problems with. That uh, oh, so I was yeah. uh, uh, <coughs> at a bar with him recently and he was like um because i knew he had the back issues because i was doing radio with him one day and the boys i was doing radio with were like feel his back and it felt like a door right it was so rock solid with no giving it and then so i saw him out and i was like how's your back mate and he showed me uh, an x-ray of his spine and it was almost like an s like it was ridiculous the battery wow. he took wow yeah, he talks about kind of t- takes, you know, five minutes to get out of bed and, you know, has, I think he said his partner has to put his socks on for him. Hmm. Hmm. So actually, I mean, it kind of, the professional wrestler analogy is not too bad because a lot of them have, you know, similar problems like yeah. that kind of yeah. at the end of the yeah. end of their career. When you got started on this podcast, you know, you, you'd been working, you'd been friends since the early 2000s. And I know you're coming up on a, uh, a milestone episode here pretty soon. Which I'm going to mention here at the at the end, and maybe you guys, I'm sure, know that it's going to be your 250th episode pretty soon, right? I don't know. Yeah, I realized that the no, other I day. Not, it's like, no, I didn't okay, that. okay. We, just we, well, we skipped through yeah. our 200th one. We're like, oh fuck, that was our 200th. We didn't say anything about that. So oh, yeah, we've got to run through a banner. Right. <laughs> Two fifty is coming up in a couple episodes, so you know, just uh, I was going to get to that here in a little bit. But how did you decide to? to to do a podcast about, about you know, because you could have done just a, a straight, you know, comedy bot broadcast or podcast, but how did you decide, let's go ahead and focus on footy? It was my idea. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, so we, we did it 2014, and I suppose I was just listening to more and more podcasts, and there weren't too many footy ones. There were a couple kind of analysis ones and then there are a lot of uh kind of super coast like fantasy football ones um but i couldn't really find a funny one so i thought oh well, why don't we just try and do one of them and so he gave, gave adam a call and off we went okay and, and yeah. how... so uh adam do you want to tell your side of the story in terms of how you started it <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it definitely was Michael. He just said, okay. hey, because um, you said there's no fo- there's actually no footy comedy podcast. Do you want to do yeah. one? I was like, yeah, that sounds great. So we kind of came up, um, we didn't really even have a few names floated, did we? I just, I think I just hit the junk time and we both kind of went, that sounds great for what we knew the show was going to be, which was kind of, you know, us trashing footy and being low rent. But... It but, really suits what we do. But you, you are... We didn't, yeah, we didn't think about it too much. Like, we didn't kind of jot down too many kind of, you know, segments or anything like that. Um, and I say to people that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be very angry if we ever actually analyse the game, you know? So, so there's enough people who can walk around and say, you know, they had 25 possessions yeah. in the forward 50 or whatever. Um, so our wheelhouse is more the, 
more than a few years ago when the Fremantle player pulled his pants down in a kebab shop and then saw a guy filming him and so walked out and punched him. That's kind of our <laughs> wheelhouse. But you know, you you, you said that you you said that you tr- you were you're trashing the game, but but he, but you're you're trashing a game that I I think that the two of you both love, correct? Oh, for sure. absolutely. Yeah. For sure. So this it comes from a place of love and knowledge, yeah. and we just enjoy it so much. And we kind of, I think the one thing we do do is sort of take the piss out of the media's obsession with certain things, like um, you know the behind the goals vision and and just things that they. You know, just the lies that come out of clubs and the media, and we're like, well, that, that's not true. You know, just don't don't say that because that never, that's not going to happen. You know, we just kind of call them out, and so we just sort of have fun with that. And when we have players, you know, in a live environment, I think they seem to really enjoy it because it's just they're getting interviewed like they've never been interviewed before because we're so you know left of center and stupid. Right now, are there are there any topics that you will not? that are off limits to you that you'll just say, we're not going there. Um, yeah, there mental was... illness, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Of, of course. Yeah. 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 There are stories that bob up where you kind of go, that's not really our wheelhouse. And, and also considering kind of the, the people involved, whether it be, you know, a player might do something, but then you go, Oh, well, they've got a family. I mean, there a couple of examples would be Dean Laidley and, um, right. Yeah, Jack right. Stephen of late where we kind of go, yeah, there's a lot going on that we don't know about. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, so let's see clear of that kind of stuff because, you know, you're just piling on and being a dick. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I jotted down in my notes here that, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was out mowing my yard and I had to turn the lawnmower off because you were, you were telling a story about Easton Woods getting his premiership medal <laughs> stolen. And I, I, couldn't, oh, I couldn't keep the mower in a straight line. And I just, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm I'm feeling bad for him at the same time, and I'm just thinking this is really this is really friggin' funny. <laughs> but I'm feeling horrible about the fact that that somebody has taken it, and it's just. But you know, it's uh, it it and, in, and the show kind of naturally developed its own sort of through lines as well, like you know, um, you know, the integrity unit, black ops, and and little things that had come up, and we just run with it, like particularly breaking down articles that footballers have written because they're so vague and shit and you're just like well what does that even mean you know like right Tossie right Goldtack wrote an article saying oh you know we do footy type drills it's like what, what does that mean just say what you did and not you know be so ridiculous and just their language is so flowery you know well yeah we kind of we kind of don't live in the real world like in terms <laughs> of like you know yeah. like you know adam you know, seems to be committing a crime every week and <laughs> where you know so uh, if he took our kind of words at face value I yeah. mean, the other day we were kind of, you could go, oh, you were making jokes about Hitler. And it's like, yeah, but we're also joking that Hitler was a member of the All Australian team. So Right. No, I, I listened to that one the other day, too. So, yeah, that was I, that just came out just the uh, day before yesterday, I think, right? Yeah. 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 I listened to that so one. So we, uh, uh, we kind of don't live in the real world. Like, yeah. we're at the yeah. events or we're holding the events or, yeah. you know, in this mythical kind of world, talking to people that we clearly haven't been talking to. I, I, did, not try to, I did not try to Google that yet to find out, so... Um, it, that's what it was fucking hilarious when it came up it was just like Hitler all Australian I was like how is that thing but the, I reckon the, the show hasn't really changed I wouldn't say Chambo that much uh, from like episode one or two in that it's always been you know we always aim to do it around 45 minutes we for, I think the first episode we probably didn't have a rundown is probably the difference to now where we have a rundown it's very structured so we don't loop back on things we kind of go this is the order that we're going to do it in. So we don't go, oh, we forgot to talk about this and then go back. And so it's a little bit, we do it in a smarter way, but I don't think it's changed a whole lot over the journey. The, one of my favourite memories is actually from the very first episode, which I actually don't think you can find online anymore. Um, and uh, we were going through Travis Cloak's Instagram account um, when he was playing at Collingwood, I think. Yeah, and he yeah. loved a hashtag. He loved a hashtag. So he had a picture of... Um, picture of his car with broken window and the hashtag was no Melbourne show for me today so for American friends would be like going to go into like a, I suppose a, a fate or a yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah just the idea that he uh, <laughs> it was so sad he couldn't go to the show and go on a few rides well you know, you know I, I'm thinking thinking about the you know what Adam what you said earlier here and See if this makes any sense to you. You you talked about one of the the, the comics that you really enjoyed, and you mentioned Norm Macdonald. 
I you know looking looking at this now, I can I can see a little Norm McDonald in what you guys do with your show, in terms of how you guys just just you don't care really who you piss off. I mean, it's you know maybe you do, but it it, it, it there aren't a whole lot of sacred cows. And, no, you know, no, they're not, and and I think I think that's what our listeners kind of appreciate because you won't get that anywhere else on any other sort of you know um, podcast out of a proper organisation because you know we don't have a boss, so we can say whatever we want right, about right. whoever we want, and you know that's the point of difference. That's what we do. That that's probably why we don't <laughs> get paid for it and don't um, you know get offered jobs on radio because people just hear it and go, <laughs> well, I don't think this can go to air. <laughs> Well, you know, it's... You know, but I also... We are very careful. Also, we are uh-huh. very careful. We don't... We're never slanderous. We do make a point of going, if that is heard, that we could get sued for that. And so we are very cautious of that. So we, you know, as much as we do go hard, we still we still don't want to uh, lose our properties. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Now... And, and things are made up. Like, we would never... We're not, we're not kind of... We would never kind of personally attack people. Like, we... We again, like if yeah. we're having a crack at someone, like we're 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 making up. You know, our ang- our anger is often over the top, and our happiness is often over the top. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. Now, you uh, some of the things that you guys have done in the past. I watched a, a couple of uh, video clips online as I was getting ready to get going on this, and I, I ran across Adam a, a an interview you did about a book that you had written. Uh, the one on oh, yeah. uh, Paris and other disappointments, and uh, it yes. was an interview you did, you did on the project, and it it just sounds like that is a hilarious book. I'm gonna have to find a copy of it now uh, because my my son has told me that uh, next next summer he wants to take leave while he from his time in the military, and he wants to go with me to Australia to watch some games. Oh yeah. So, oh, right. so, you know, we'll, we'll see if that happens. I mean, that's on my bucket list of things to do, but, uh, I told him, I said, you know, you go enjoy, you go enjoy your life and maybe, maybe he's going to have a book out of this as well. But I, I'm, uh, I, <laughs> well, I, it'd be interesting to see how two military types travel together. It'd be well, very regimented. It, well, I, I, I've been out of the military now for almost 40 years, but, uh, so yeah. I'm well, 35 years. So I, I've kind of lost my military bearing. Yeah, no need for the hotel staff to come in and make the beds. You'd be like, got it, done it. <laughs> exactly, exa- yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, it sounded absolutely hilarious. You know, and I, I watched a, a piece, Michael, that you did uh, um, with a gentleman by the name of Tom Ballard on a show where you were talking about living uh, yeah. living alone. And I, I think that's something that nobody should be watching right now with all of the uh, being locked away stuff because uh, they would definitely need therapy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it was well. It's funny that I mean, we thought the kind of isolation stuff. Like in about the four months or so before it, I was in the build-up to kind of comedy festivals and the like. We have kind of the festival season for comedy, you know, kind of from about in various locations around the country, from about Feb to the uh, end of May, roughly. Um, and so I was kind of in ISO in a way because I was just going out and doing stand-up, and I wasn't um, taking on any um, extra work or anything. So um, just so I could focus on the festivals, which then got cancelled about, you know, 10 days before it kicked off. But um, so this ISO thing hasn't actually been too much of a stretch for me because I was like, oh, I was already doing that. Yeah, it's yeah. been it's 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 been interesting. Yeah, I've got, you know, my my daughter's home from college. And like I said, my wife is working all the time. And it's it is in many ways like being a bachelor because my daughter's gone out and found a job. So I'm, I'm home by myself with the dogs. It's just. Uh, yeah. Party time. So, well, yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, <laughs> I'm just just trying to get my just trying to get my students through the last week and a half of school. We're we're done next yeah, Thursday, yeah. so I'm looking forward to that being done. But uh, you know, what grade do you teach? Uh, mostly juniors. I teach government, and then I teach a uh, college level geography class as well. So, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, but um, it's been a uh, it's it's been an interesting experience having the kids home, and who knows if we're even going back in the fall. But uh, yeah, so I mean, the interesting thing that I've found about, uh, you know, Americans dealing with COVID is, and, you know, Australians are kind of looking on you guys going, oh, they can't even, you know, stay indoors and all this sort of stuff, is at the moment we're heading into winter. So it's actually a lot easier because it's the weather's shit. So we kind of go, well, I probably wouldn't want to go outside anyway. It's not as much. If it was 28 or 30 degrees here, which is, you know, uh, 90 degrees right, for you right. guys, 
no one's staying indoors. Everyone's going to be outside. You know, we're, <laughs> well, we're just we're just fortunate that we're you know the weather's keeping us in anyway, so it's yeah. actually helping. Us. We we've we've literally and I did we've literally gone from about eight Celsius to about twenty six Celsius in the span of about four days. We we That's just nice. we didn't even have spring. We just said spring. Pfft, it's a rumor, and we just went right on into summer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a right. you know, scrambling to find. Um, a bit. I mean. I mean, I don't want Adam to kind of overstate, you know, we, we are still quite similar to Americans over here by the fact I regularly um, show up with my mates with guns um, at their state house. <laughs> hey, uh, Just for fun. I'll be Just honest. Kicks. I have, you know. Uh, you need an AR-15 to take down kangaroos. Well, I've, I've seen some of those videos of those kangaroos. They look, they, they look pretty tough. You know, no, they've got to they gotta, they gotta kick in them, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you don't really see the big ones uh, in like in the city. You can see the smaller ones and stuff, but the big the big ass ones are in like the middle of Australia. But uh, right, right, yeah, that will that will tear your guts out. Yeah, that and and you know, I, I we actually have had, you know, I think I actually we had a restaurant here in town that was serving kangaroo steaks, if I'm not mistaken. I had ostrich at one time as well. Um, yeah, sure, kangaroo is really nice. nice. Yeah, like it. Yeah, it, it's it um, tasty. You probably really couldn't find it too many times on menus or in supermarkets until probably about 10, 15 years ago. But um, yeah, it's all over the place now. Yeah, I have it quite a bit. Do you, can you can you get it regularly in Wuhan, or does that do you have to stay in Australia to get it? <laughs> That's a really good Maybe question. I think in I think the here. I feel like in those some of the photos of the markets there, they were showing koalas on sale. Oh my god! Um, and Seriously? I think I, yeah, I feel like that is right. Oh. And now, now I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm pretty gonna, certain I'm gonna, it's illegal to eat koalas. You can't eat them, by the way, Craig. One, because yeah, it's illegal, and two, they're just they're toxic because they eat so much eucalypt, and they're full of chlamydia. Well, <laughs> I, I... So, just to, uh, put, a, put a stamp on it. Well, Don't eat koala. What about what about the ones that are, that are in the koala military though? The drop bears are they are they okay? <laughs> uh, yes, wonderful little myth we've created. <laughs> uh, yeah. On another, another myth we've created too is that people drink Fosters. No one in Australia drinks no. Foster. Yeah, that's I've, I, I've, I've never seen anybody here drink it either. But oh, okay, uh, I thought was it is it available at like Outback Steakhouse? You know what? We have oh, one of those yeah. in town. I don't recall yeah. seeing. I don't recall seeing it there. Um, yeah. you know, um, I think uh, it'd be a big UK thing. Um, uh, there's a story from uh, Hawthorne. I think Hawthorne played. The Blues over in London at the Oval um, in about 1986 or so. And um, John Elliott was the president of Carlton at the time, and he also ran the company that made Fosters. I think they were called Elders, I think. And so he paid a million dollars, and they'd never been done before. And they had to paint, they got to paint um, a big Fosters logo on the wing. And he gave one of the players, Wayne Harms, he gave him the, the job to do it. No, no, Buckley, Jim Buckley gave him the job to do it and so it was this big um bender essentially they just go and drink for a week and so on the day before jimmy was like oh gee i better go and do it so he went to get the paints and he got the wrong paints he got like oil paints instead of water paints yeah Yeah, and so he drew the big foster sign on the wing and then they couldn't get it off and so he was there (laughs) for like seven seven months and then eventually I had to um, dig it up and replace the turf. And wow. John Elliott was like, oh, "Bloody, bloody best, best bargain ever made." Yeah, he, you know, <laughs> he got his money. He got his money worth out of that one, didn't he? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that. Maybe that is. Uh, maybe that's how it became so prevalent uh, here. Because yeah, it used to be advertised here quite a bit. Uh, but you know, I've I've never. Yeah, and I, I collected beer cans when I was a kid. That's what that's what you do when when one side of your family is alcoholics. You collect beer cans. Um, yeah, right. you know, I've got, I've got, I've got over 2000 of them in boxes in my basement still to this day, but, yeah, uh, wow. yeah, but, uh, I, I have a Foster's can, but I, I don't, I don't recall ever seeing anybody actually drink one and I've not seen one in a store here ever. How, I don't did, believe. how did you come to footy, Craig? How did you get involved in, you know, seeing AFL? See, you got to go back and listen to episode one. Um, yeah. but it, no, I, uh, I, I do public uh, I do public address announcing for football and soccer here at, at the school where I work, and I would get home on Friday nights, and the Fox Sports Channel here would carry one game a week, and it was usually yep. that Friday night. So I'd get home from from work, and I'd sit down to watch a game, and it just got it was really interesting. It became fascinating. Um, 
the Browns were terrible. I was looking for an outlet, you know, where, where something, you know, I knew that I didn't have a, a vested interest in either of the teams, so they weren't going to lose for me. Uh, and I just, I just kind of fell in love with the game over the span of, you know, a, a, a few years. And, you know, it took about a year and a half before I decided on which team I wanted that I was going to end up supporting. And I've kind of, you know, jumped in, you know, I got, you know, jumped in with both feet to become a Cats fan. I became an international member this year and, you know, so it's been how uh, long before you got a sense of the rules? Like you complete, like you went, I can understand this without having to stop. You know, I don't quite get what I, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. I'm, I'm, I sometimes, I still, still get a little fuzzy occasionally when there's going to be a ball up after a tackle or if it's going to be a free kick. I, that, that still gives me a little, little trouble, but for the most part, I've got a pretty good handle on things. Um, yeah, you know, I've been watching, watching we a lot. Understand all the interpretations <laughs> well, yeah, no, you're probably right. I mean, that's probably the, that's probably one of the main areas really actually where the kind of the difference between holding the ball and uh, a ball up is um, quite minute, I suppose. So don't yeah. beat yourself up yeah, if you get yeah. confused by that. Up to interpretation sometimes, you know. One umpire will say yes, another umpire will say no. So you just go. Yeah. Yeah, and Adam, you mentioned uh, earlier that you had talked to, to Brian Barish, and he actually, Brian actually had uh, Razor Ray on his podcast last week or the week before uh, for an interview. Oh, cool. oh yeah. Yeah, so I, I've not listened to it yet, but uh, yeah, he had Razor Ray on for a – for an interview right before he went into quarantine and uh yeah i'm sure started collecting checks from whichever club's going to be you know paying him this year <laughs> <laughs> i won't say i'd that. love to have razor ray on um that'd be amazing because he can he can you know really talk as well he's very entertaining um i feel for the person who might be isolating with him because he's yap 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 <laughs> <laughs> now you know i i you know i i found a couple of news stories that yeah and i'm i We've, we're already into 35 minutes, and I, I, they may be ones that you're planning on using this week. So I won't, I won't bring them up because I don't want to, I don't want to steal your thunder because that, you know. Oh, go for but, oh, but, uh, feel free. Feel free. You know, you know, I, I just, I've, have you? Are people as annoyed by Eddie McGuire that as as I seem to be? I mean, I, I, I figured out that he's a halfway decent commentator, but it's 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 almost like he seems to sometimes be under the impression that that. That the whole game revolves around him. Am I am I wrong with that? He is an interesting one. So uh, to give a bit of perspective, so I'm in I live in Sydney. So Adam's living right, in Melbourne. Right. Eddie McGuire has been he started out as a journo in Melbourne probably 30 years ago now. So he's kind of been on TV, radio, on and off for mm-hmm. a good 30 years. And so you could kind of say he is the unofficial boss of Melbourne. He's got a finger in every pie, whether it be, um, you know, on boards of things and companies, all that kind of jazz. Right, right. Um, but it's interesting because he also hosts, well, I suppose it's a variation on who wants to be a millionaire. Um, and so if you talk to people, some people outside of Victoria, they go, Eddie McGuire, oh, that, that guy who's a game show host. Like they don't have an understanding of his prevalence oh. in Victoria. That's, um, that's a great point. So it's kind of quite interesting, yeah. But he, I suppose, he's been the president of Collingwood for like yeah. 20 odd years now. Right. I found Someone said something funny the other day, like, we're going, why are we talking about Eddie's conflict of interest like 22 years into his presidency? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, that I have a story, which I reckon I can tell. Um, there was a guy I knew ages ago, and he helped, he helped someone else set up a company. Um, and... After a few years, the company was going pretty well, and the guy said to my, the guy I knew, he's like, you know, if you want to buy in, you know, you can start making some money, you know, to kind of say thank you for helping me out at the start. And the guy said, oh, no, I don't think I should because I think that would be a conflict of interest. And he felt a hand on his shoulder and turned around. It was Eddie McGuire, and he said, there's no such thing as conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so that I, could be like 20 just, years ago. Yeah, yeah it just – it. It amazes me that you know that because he's he's a great commentator and he he does a great job. But I just I have maybe it's just my mindset here that I I can't imagine some you know I can't imagine Jerry Jones of the Cowboys you know being a com you know being well, a comment commentator or Bill Belichick being a commentator. I, I, yeah, well, so first, you imagine those guys being a commentator and having their own radio show and being involved in their club. So they've got. 
three different hats and they put them all on at different right, times right. and they just go, oh, no, but I was doing it as a, as a media commentator on that one. And you go, yeah, but you're still a president and you're still on the board of this. So, you know, you have got an interest over there. And, you know, you're saying here that, you, you know, him saying that the Geelong should say what happened with Jack Stephen. And it's sort of like, but Eddie doesn't say what happens with the Collingwood players. Like, he, he keeps it to himself. So it's just right. a really strange thing that yeah. when and he's in the moment, he just can't step outside of it and see that. And, uh, you know, and I don't want you on. I'm, if you're a Collingwood supporter and you're listening, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take shots at him here, but I just, I just, you know, I just. If you're a Collingwood supporter, you absolutely love him, I reckon. I reckon well, I would imagine so, so yeah. For the club. And like I said, I think he's, he's a great. really good. Yeah, it, and, and it looks like that, you know, from the outside looking in, it looks like he does a great job as their president. And it looks like he does a great Absolutely. job as, as the uh, as a commentator as well. But I, I just, you know, that, that conflict of interest thing, which I guess there is no such thing, as I just heard. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like Bigfoot. Um, does, does Australia have a version of a Bigfoot? You know, some mysterious um, creature that's never actually God, been God. seen? Uh, Aaron Sanderland, Clayton Fremantle, seven foot tall. <laughs> I've seen him before. I've seen not lately though. Not lately. Now, isn't there talk, Michael, of a puma in eastern Victoria that was left there by the American Army or something? Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's every now and then there's a, uh, a spotting of the Tasmanian tiger, who I think were extinct yeah. from about the fifties. Yeah, weren't those? Yeah, that's. Uh, I've seen I've seen photographs of and one like one of those in the wild. Yeah. Or one that was yeah. in the wild, the la- like one of the last ones. Now, Tasmanians, man, you can't trust them. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. I'm not. I didn't. I wasn't saying yes to that. So. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I'm, you guys aren't helping me here at all. <laughs> I mean, I, um, you know, where, I. Where are you thinking of going to if you come to Australia, Craig? Well, you know, I'm. For the last couple of years, I you know, well, first of all, I don't know what the heck the fixture is going to look like next year because I saw a story that said they were, you know, that they liked this idea of the uh, the rolling fixture that they might do the same thing next year. You know, that they talked yeah, about. Yeah, I like, think there'll it. be uh, little bits of innovation that will come out of this in yeah, terms so. of, um, yeah, maybe a rolling fixture. Maybe um, I think people were pretty happy with the shortened quarters in that first game, yeah. um, and then also uh, experimenting a little bit with um, time spots. So I think they're going to be. I think there's going to be a Thursday game every week, and I think they're doing Sunday nights. And I, Sunday I, nights probably not ideal to get a crowd, but they're good for at least for this season. That with no crowds, they'd be great for TV. It, it should be, yeah. And, and although you know, you think if you're if you're playing in the on the major, you know the play, playing in the major metropolitan areas, you're probably still going to draw a halfway decent crowd. You know, you may not get the kids. You hope, here. yeah. You, you may not get the kids because they have school the next day. Because you guys, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so that, there's there's that big difference there. You know, that's uh, not 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 the issue for us. You know, during the summer with baseball, because we're pretty much out of school. Um, yeah. My take on kind of Thursday nights and Sunday nights and Monday nights, so they're, they're great, and I want to watch them. But uh, just as long as I don't have to go to them. <laughs> um, and usually Thursday nights when we've had them, they've been uh, I don't maybe one or two have been in Melbourne, but they're usually at a ground outside of Melbourne where say Adelaide or Perth, where they're they're guaranteed to get fifty thousand, no matter, no right, matter when, right. when it's played. You know, you play it, you know, Tuesday at three in the morning, and you'd still get fifty thousand people. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind that because that would be that'd be fun. Time that'd for be, you. That'd be great for me. <laughs> that would work out well. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because yeah, because I'm I'm normally getting, uh, you know, normally it's you know five forty in the morning or about eleven thirty at night or when games are starting for me. So yeah, sure. You sure. Know, so I'll get I'll get up and watch those those morning ones, but. Uh, you know, I, I as far as where I'm gonna go, I I don't know. I I'm thinking we would probably fly into to Melbourne and try to get to as many games as we could in the span of like a week, week and a half. That's what I would yeah. hope to do. Um, well, I reckon if you did that, you could see at least eight games. I reckon if you did a week and a half. Yeah, mm. that that would not suck. I, I think, yeah, yeah, no, I think that would it's be. A, it's a, it's a fun experience. At, at yeah, the footy, you know? I had one of yeah. one of the guys that I interviewed who's now since started a podcast of his own. Um, He's a he's a Bulldogs fan, and he went over last year, and you know he he actually got to go out with the cheer squad and hold up the banner, and you know sat with the oh, cheers. Cool. Yeah, it, it was just a really neat experience uh, that he had. So it was, uh, and and he is he has he has a he probably has more Bulldogs gear than a forty year Bulldogs fan that lives in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah wow, well, it's just you know, amazing. I don't think I don't think I've ever heard an American say cheer squad before. Yeah, it what's well, 
it's what they are, aren't they? It is. It is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just used to hearing cheer leaders, but never cheer squad. Well, that, I, I've seen some of the people in, in the cheer squad. I don't want them dressing like cheerleaders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, yeah, which uh, you know, leads me to, leads me to one thing I wanted to mention here, and I ha- I had one really two more questions after this, but you know I I did want to mention, uh, and we talked about this before we started the recording, but you know Adam, I think you've ruined watching games live. Okay, you know I we get the uh, we get the Amy commercials here. You know I, I oh, they, yeah. they, they make me want to buy insurance. I'll just say that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know. You would think that probably some people would be driving their cars off the road just with the billboards on the side. Okay, okay never mind. Uh, but <clears throat> I watched a, a video that you posted. It was a takeoff of a Bunnings Warehouse ad, and it. Uh, oh yeah. I don't. I don't think I'm going to be able to watch a Bunnings Warehouse ad ever again without not thinking about the video clip that you made. And if you want to find so it out there. Basically- <laughs> it's a warehouse. Yeah, it's out there. I don't know if I'm going to post a link to it or not. Maybe I will. Oh, I, think, I think you can. <laughs> think I can. Think I, can. I, think I so should. Like, yeah, it's for what would what would you have? Home Depot is that kind of a similar uh, sort of store? Home Home Depot. There's one called Menards. There's another one called Lowe's. Yeah, there's. We actually have three yeah, of those, right. and you know we're in a town of only about twenty five thousand people, and we have three of them. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. basically, the the gist of it was uh, one of those kind of hardware stores, but. For sex products and stuff. Yeah, so, it was it was hilarious. Get your gear at bargain prices. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, we had to do a lot of research to write that sketch, actually. Like going to sex and going, oh, yeah, cock ring, that's funny. Oh, God. So the the company that you used their facility, they were okay with, they were they were good with you using it then. I'm a, yeah, they were. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. that would have been like, yeah, a sex store that we went into yeah. and shot that. Yeah, because yeah. I've heard them advertised on uh, a couple different shows on i'm not sure if it was on uh uh triple m or on sen one of those two channels i've ever heard on before but you know yeah I, I had two other questions for you guys before we wrap up here um if you could change one rule of the game what would it be probably no more hawthorn <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree with that. You, well, you guys have um, you guys have to do an episode soon here, so let's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what would it be? I reckon maybe um, kicking backwards in the maybe in the defensive half is not a mark. Okay. So that, to, keep the, to keep the game moving forward and to stop people just chipping it around. That's not a bad idea. Has that ever been? I'm has that been a rule before? With. Uh... It hasn't, it hasn't, but they've talked about trialing something like that or making kicks a little bit longer than 15 metres. Just, right, so, right. just so you can't hold the ball and slow the game down. That's what they want. They want right. the game more free-flowing. Right. I'm going to go with 666. Get rid of it. So you can go back and defend if you've got a tiny lead at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, someone who's made a point, I've listened to a podcast, made a point about how... Um, Part of it will contribute to no more kind of hundred. Well, we haven't had a hundred goal kicker for what, twelve years, but um, yeah. just the idea of giving a forward space in that fifty. So you get out of the middle, kick it long. There's a one-on-one contest with a forward and a backman. Um, because uh, everybody's. And you want to uh, that, do you? Um, no, I want to have that. I want to have the one-on-one. Oh, you want six, six, six all the time. No, go on, go on. But that's just the idea that if you've got, you know, 12 people in that 50-meter arc, um, you're not going to get those, you know, yeah, cool yeah. kind of one-on-one contests. So, yeah. That, if that makes sense. That would probably uh, that would probably cut down on, you know, some of the, uh, the, the, the smaller players being able to get in there and, and do some of the, you know, somebody like an Eddie Betts or a Liam Ryan, that kind of thing, because that, they'd be getting bounced around in there. With that many yeah. bodies in there, Ch- Chambo wants to ruin the game. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have your 250th episode coming out pretty soon. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on that because that's a, you know, when I when I started mine out, you know, people said, well, you got to get past episode seven, which I never thought I was going to. But congratulations on 250. That's uh, that is uh, that's great. Have you guys got anything special planned for it? Are you? Uh, we're gonna go through a banner. Uh, we're going to tear each other off 
We're gonna we're gonna go go through go through the banner with a couple of kids. Now we don't have children, but we're gonna find two kids. So. <laughs> Make sure they have masks on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, I believe we are entered into the podcast hall of fame. For yes. Yes. Become live, live members. Now I can't tell if you're being serious on that or not. <laughs> no, I don't uh, okay. not quite. No, there is there is a media wing of the AFL Hall of Fame, so a lot of journos and the like have gone yeah. in that. So, yeah. uh, so that's yeah, obviously our main aim. <laughs> so, do, do you think you guys have a shot at that? I mean, if you have, have, are there any bridges yeah. you haven't burned yet? That uh, yeah, look, yeah, there's, there's I a think... lot of recognition at the higher level for us. Now, and I'm just thinking here: have you had anybody that? that you have skewered, that you've made fun of, that, that has just come back to you through an email or something like that to, to either say that, hey, that was brilliant, that was really funny, or they got angry with you? You Don't, 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 don't mention any... Called us, Ricky Nixon called us flog pods, and I can't remember... Do you remember what that was about, Chamber? We wrote something about him in a tweet or something. I think he might have suggested that he was going to schoolies in a tweet. So for American listeners, school is kind of like, I suppose, spring break spring in a way, break. like at the end of yeah. all the all the kids who are finishing school for the year, like in year 12, end, uh-huh. of, um, end of the Australian schooling, school. um, yeah. we'll go and party for a week. And usually it's on the Gold Coast, which is kind of a bit of a, um, a very crappy okay. Vegas, I suppose, to put it in a... I, I, I won't mention names here, but there was that story Adam you told me where we, I think it was one of our live shows, and I made a joke, and then a friend of Adam's just said to the person who, I'm trying to work out how to redact this, <laughs> there was a person, a journo, who um, heard it just through a recommendation of a friend and then came back and was like, what the fuck? Because we... Yeah, implied something about them. <laughs> okay. I don't remember that. I'll tell I'll, you. I can't. I won't say the name. Don't, yeah, don't, don't say. <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't say it here because I, I don't want to get any. Of you, I don't want to get you guys in trouble or you know anger somebody. But uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, I. I don't. Chamber, man, he's a loose cannon. You can't trust him. Well, it's. Yeah, but I, I it's. Uh, I, I having what I've been watching the last couple of weeks. I have, I have a feeling I might know who it would be, but I'm not going to say because I. I'm not right. going to speculate. Um, I am curious, though. I, w- I, w- I would love to know. I think we've had a few messages from people from the uh, who work at the AFL who listen, but I'd, be, I'd love to know how many do um, and what positions they have. I'd, I'd be curious about that. Well, they don't have yeah, a position. And also, I, I would almost guarantee that no player listens to our podcast. Yeah. Well, I was going to say nobody at the AFL even has a position right now until the games start playing again. They're all, they're all at home, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, well, yeah, yeah but yeah, I remember, I think, I think very early on in like 2014 when we started, I feel like we got followed, wait, I'm pretty, pretty certain we got followed by Nick Narcheski on Twitter. So, I don't know if he listened yeah, right. or was just following the tweets, but um, I will we'll say Nick Narcheski is our biggest fan. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, well, hey, gents, I... I want to thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, to thank the two of you, uh, Adam Rosenbach and Michael Chamberlain of Junk Time AFL Podcast, for taking time out of your morning. It's now afternoon there uh, for sitting down and talking with me. I'm thrilled to have you guys on. I, I, you've got a fan in me. I, uh, I, I, I find your show hilarious. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not listened to their show, I strongly encourage you to give it, you know, give it a listen to. If you, lo- if you love footy, if you love laughing, I'd listen to it. If you're going to listen to it at work, I admit, I'd recommend you use your earbuds, unless, you, unless you've got a really cool boss. Uh, but, but you know, it is it is a funny show, and I I strongly strongly recommend that you give it a listen because it, it is hilarious, gentlemen. Oh, thanks, Craig. I, I appreciate you coming on. This was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, thanks, man. Okay. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Um, well, uh, uh, if you come to Australia too, hit us up. Like, uh, I, if we're I, in town. I, 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 I absolutely will. I would, uh, I, I would love to. I, I have, you know, it's. Uh, I'm hoping it happens next year. I. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I'm. I, I'm. I'm one of those people that that became a Cats fan, and then realized, you don't look very good in stripes, do you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, no white shorts, eh? <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm. I. Uh, if, if I, ha- I have a Guernsey, and I think if I put it on, I went out in public, people would try to map out Australia on my butt. 
Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's, uh, I need to lose a little bit of weight before I make the trek over there. So, but uh, it's going to happen. But uh, gentlemen, I appreciate yeah, you correct. coming on. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday. Good luck with your 250th. Okay. And, and Thanks, beyond. Thanks, okay. So have a great week already. And Take you it, too. You bet. Take it easy, show. guys. Thank you, man. Yep, or take it easy. Thank you. Thanks, man. Go Hawks. <laughs> Go Blues. Go Cats. I'd like to thank Adam Rosenbach and Michael Chamberlain of Junk Time AFL Podcast for being my guests this week. Gentlemen, I hope you had as much fun as I did. A lot of laughs. Congratulations on your 250th episode. I'm looking forward to it. One correction I wanted to make about the interview uh, before I wrap up was I was mistaken about Razor Ray appearing on Brian Barish's Marks and Stripes podcast. I thought I'd heard that somewhere, but it turns out I was mistaken. I know he was interviewed somewhere recently, and when I find that, I will post that link in an upcoming episode. Ladies and gents, the league's going to be restarting on June the 11th, very, very soon. And there's going to be games each week on FS1 or FS2 here in the States. If you want to check those out, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. But if you want to check out the game before they start playing again and look at some classic games, I'd strongly encourage you to check out the Watch AFL app. And they're offering their catalog of games as well as their television programming for $2 a week. So you could get a couple weeks worth out of that for 4 bucks. Uh, to see if this is a sport that you would enjoy, and I think you would. This deal lasts until the season starts up again on the 11th, so if you want to check out this fantastic game, this is a great way to do it. And don't forget that while you can find all the episodes of this podcast at ayankonthefooty.podbean.com, you can also find it on your favorite podcast provider. And now that you've listened, I'd hope you'd consider giving me a review on Apple Podcasts. I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to hear what I'm doing well, what I need to work on. And if you can also reach me via email at a yank on the footy at gmail.com. If you got ideas for guests or if you've got a great story that you'd like to tell, I'd love to hear from you. I'm always looking for great ideas on having people come on the show. Would love to hear from you. And you can also reach me at yank underscore on, on, on Twitter, as well as on Facebook and Instagram at a yank on the footy. I'd like to thank Mr. Joseph McDade for the use of two of his pieces of music. Mr. McDade's created some fantastic music, and I'm using Elevation and Backplate. You can reach him at josephmcdade.com slash music. And again, Mr. McDade, thanks for your hard work and your wonderful music. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you because while many of us are fans of our teams, deep down, we're fans of a game that we all love, and that's the game of footy. We are less than two weeks away from football and next week in the episode I will give you my tips if you will who I pick to win next week um, I'm going to have to dig back into my super coach league because I haven't looked at my team since round one I don't even know how well I did so ladies and gentlemen again I thank you for listening I ask that you consider sharing this podcast with your friends and family and may your dribble kick never hit the post I'll catch you later. This has been episode 26 of A Yank on the Footy. Don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on on Twitter or at ayankonthefooty at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at A Yank on the Footy. Again, thanks for listening, and please consider sharing the podcast with your friends and family. Goodbye.